All right, I think we're good to go here. Just getting a couple last minute bits and pieces organized for tonight's stream. What's up, everyone? So I had a couple of requests. I had some, some people reach out to me and ask if I could go through the loot caches that I like to use on customs in order to, to generate the income that I do. Basically the basis of the loot runs that I've been showing on the live streams over the past six sessions, I guess last three weeks. So I'm gonna go over those today. I'll take you through uh, you know, a tutorial style of all of these caches. I'll, I'll point them out. I've, I've got a couple of little resources here organized so that I can, can show you what we're gonna be looking at. And I'm, I'm not planning to make this video right away, but I, I think that this would be just as valuable. If you, so if you're, you know, you're trying to learn where the loot caches are and, and you wanna follow along, it'd be a, you know, a pretty good time to get in. I'm gonna be starting at the main bridge of customs. So if you are wanting to, to come and tag along, you wanna learn these loot caches, you wanna run through at the same time, hop into an offline mode, raid on customs, and then and then head over to the big man main bridge. So if you know where that is, and I'll give you a couple minutes here while we just get, get started up. Let's see. Hey, what's up stream? So, um, you know, I've, I've been inviting people to do this for a little bit now. If there's something specific that you'd like me to cover in one of these live sessions, uh, feel free to reach out and make a request. I am, you know, pretty flexible about what it is that I'm going to be showing on these live streams. And my, my whole goal is to just make the learning experience, the new player experience easier. And so I've been directing my attention at all of that. And, you know, part of the learning experience that I'll be doing soon, and we talked about this last stream and the one before even is that I'm going to be doing map learning sessions on this as well and I guess this is this is in a sense you know one aspect of map learning so this is more directed specifically at loot and specifically at the hidden caches so that's what I'm going to be doing today uh, and then on um, on Sunday I'm planning to do my first reserve live session so I'll be running through reserve showcasing the areas that I believe will be part of the future guide, the one that I, I put up, post, attach a mini-map to, all that kind of stuff. So I'll have that going soon. And on the, the live session, what you can expect is I'll be I'll be running through the different points, trying to figure out, you know, the the most the most efficient route to go from point A to point B to, you know, however many points there ends up being. And the idea is that when someone comes away having followed the guide and learned all of the positions. I know that those two are a bit different, but when I, once you've learned the entire series of locations, you should have a very good understanding of the map layout. And and that that sets the foundation for all future map learning. Then when you, you know, you go in and you watch someone else's stream, you're really going to understand where they are in relation to everything else. And that's so important in this game. It's, you know, it's a foundational part of becoming a you know, a decent Tarkov player. And, and this game, like, you know, that's part of what makes the game so awesome is that there's so much to learn. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's what you'll be you'll be seeing on these live streams. Uh, now, you don't need any specific gear for this. Like I said, just head over to customs. We're going to hop into an offline mode, no PVE, and, and we're just going to, we're just going to get into the raid. You don't, you don't need anything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through all of the loot caches that I like to hit in a map. So I'm going to bring up a, a little resource right now. So this is, this is the, I think this is all of them. There's, there's one that's actually missing up near the top. Oh, here we go. We can, we can actually see it. Um, so this is all of the loot caches or actually, I think I'm missing two over here on the left. Can I get them? Maybe. Let's see. I'm going to see if I even have them. I do. Yeah. Okay. I am... Going to edit something on the fly. Let's do this. That gives us gives us everything. Okay, cool. So this is the entire list of all of the loot caches, and where we're gonna start is right over here. So we're gonna start on on this bridge, kind of towards the end of it. I'm just gonna make sure that that's that's showing through. Awesome. And I realize that this map is gonna take up a fairly large portion, so I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be revealing the map and hiding the map as needed, and you know, uh, uh, my goal with this is to, to give you some context of where I am. So I'll be able to show you where we are at a given time on the map. And, uh, you know, this is this is second best to having uh, one of the animated maps, basically. You know, you'll be able to see kind of where we are and, 
And the, the whole goal of this is to allow people to see where it is that I'm looting. And I'm going to point out some of the things that I used uh, as references to start learning all of these locations. Because some of them can be kind of hard to find, you know? Yo, what's up, Carlos? I'm going to be doing some of my own cash runs on Interchange. Nice. Yeah, dude, the, the Interchange caches are great. I, I really like Interchange. It's I would I would actually say that it's probably my favorite map. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of some stuff here. We don't need anything, really. The interchange is, is just so cool. The big, giant mall. And the, you know, the mall is kind of scary to be in. <laughs> but I, I think it's one of the neatest places to fight. And there's so many opportunities for flanks, for repositions. And like, really nice tactical fun play. Yeah, I would, uh, I would... I would definitely say that Interchange would be my number one favorite map, and then Customs is probably number two. Now, I don't know what number three is. I don't really like Woods. I used to like Woods more than I do now, but I think that's just because I, I don't really I don't really play on it all that much. Brett Bailey asks, am I still streaming on Twitch? Not right now. I find that the being able to stream on YouTube provides me the opportunity to to have searchable content, and that that's pretty important for me getting more more people that that'll find value in what I'm sharing. So, I I would like to go back and stream on Twitch in the future, but for now, um, while I'm just very limited in time and getting acclimated to school, so this is this is a big reason why I'm I'm doing what I'm doing. So while I'm while I'm getting used to school, and I think in the future I'll have more time to to be on Twitch. So. I do plan to go back there, but right now this this is um, this is kind of this is better. Uh, so here I am, and this is where I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna start this in, in probably about one minute, but I'm just gonna talk about the the map and and we'll we'll sh share some of the information that I, I think about here just at the start. So there's a couple of of these containers that I'm not going to not gonna go find. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go to this one. I'm not gonna go to this one. And I'm not going to go to this one. And <clears throat> the way that this route's going to pretty much go is I'm going to I'm going to head down here to to these two, and I head up top, cross in, and I know obviously you know I'm not going to be able to go through certain certain areas. We're going to head to this. We're going to run through here, and and then coming up, you know I'm going to try and talk about the map a little bit, in in terms of like you know if you're doing this route, how how should you approach it, and like can you run these directions at any at any given time and the answer is no like you, you you don't want to run in certain areas uh you know early on in the map but later on in the map basically everything is is fair game uh, but some of these areas like this area specifically can be a bit tricky early on so you got to be careful if you're trying to do this early but this is the way that we're gonna we're gonna run we're gonna hit that cache and then we're gonna run to the front of this that cache that cache and then this is where i'm still I think what I'll end up doing is this. And then we'll we'll do a little break. We'll come all the way up here. And then I'll come down, get that cache. We'll get this one. And then what I might just do is head up through this little break in the rocks. Come up, get that cache, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And then once once we get into this area, I want to try and keep things as linear as possible. So we'll jump over the bridge or the fence of that cache, and then I'll end up over here. So this is the, this is the route that I'll I'll take, and this is similar to the loot route that I'll do in a late late scav run. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna okay. I do have old map on there. Nice. So that's that's basically what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, there may be slight variance in in what we actually end up doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide that into create this, and then I'll just kind of share where we are as we get to the different spots. So the first one that we're going to tackle. The first ones are these two right here, and I'll I'll show when we're actually at that location. Uh, 
I remembered I promised you a Twitch Prime sub like two years ago and I finally get the chance to provide. <laughs> You're kind, man. Don't even worry about it. You know, actually, funny thing about that is that I I really like being on YouTube right now because no one no one is subbing to me. <laughs> and I like I I I appreciate that people sub to the channel on Twitch. Um, but I like I I wish that I could just give them away for free, dude. I I like that, you know, you can just hang out on YouTube and you can sub to the channel which has a big value and, and you can you can like the content, you can comment like you know all of that stuff so like if if you would if you would love to like share a little bit of that support Bren, like you know check out the vids uh let me know if there's something in there that you like comment if there's something that you want to see and you know that that would be amazing that that'd be that'd be worth more to me than than the sub even though the sub is awesome and you know it's it's actually income which is cool uh, so here we are at the bridge. If we look to the left, we would see Sniper Roadblock. And this little area is where I typically dip down to get these caches. And there's two areas that you can go. I may as well grab a weapon so we can have some, some view. Uh, actually, I'll use my, my, my flashlight. Do I want to use a flashlight? Uh... Oh, I've got one of these lasers. That's right. Okay, we'll use the laser. So uh, there's down here, and if you want like this cheeky little spot, you can actually go down right here, and we'll we'll, we'll wander down. You can see same thing. So there's the there's the spot. So this is, you know, if I'm on if I'm on this this one side of the map, by the way, over that direction is Big Red. So we started up on the bridge. That's Big Red, and if I'm on a scav, this is this is typically where I start. So we'll come up, and. Here is one of our first caches. So at each cache, I guess what I'm going to try and do is I'll show exactly where we are. So on this one, this is our first cache right here. I'll leave that up for a sec. So, and this first cache is one of these these like sticks and and wood wood covers. And these, these can be kind of hard to see if you're using like the default coloring scheme of Tarkov. So if you're finding it difficult, there you can do two things. One, you can turn up your hue and saturation on your actual computer. Uh, and if you want like the easy quick fix, enable post effects. See colorfulness here, I have it jacked up to 90. Um, let's, let's look at the difference here. Um, so, Oh, I can barely even see the difference um, when I'm looking just at this, but I'll, I'll turn it on just for now. And what we should see is like a very vibrant Tarkov. And and because it's cloudy, it, it's it's less less so. But yeah, if you're having a hard time finding these things, I would turn up your hue and saturation. Um, so we have this guy right here. <laughs> and in relation to what we're looking at, if you want to try and find this one, so there's two sets of pipes that have caches near them. I think there's like a third third pipe all the way down to the end. Uh, so this one, the first set of pipes, and we have a, a big bush right to the left of them. So I always remember this, that you know it's next to the, the two sets of pipes, and this is where the first one is. We're gonna head over to the second. And, and for reference, you can see RUF is right there. This is the second set of pipes, and this one's actually underneath the pipes on the bend. So we got the bend right here. And here's a barrel cache. So now we've seen both kinds of hidden caches. There's the barrel cache and there's the ground cache. And we'll bring this up real quick. Oh, I don't want to do that. What happened here? I think I managed to move my... Center. There we go. So we just got this this other cache and now we're, we're right on top of this one right here. It's gonna be a little bit a little bit funny looking okay so next up the top up to the top of the road so this is one of the areas that if you're early on in the raid I would recommend doubling back going towards the bridge and then taking the forest that's that's across so you would you would cross the bridge and you come down over there and if you can visualize this there's there's water on the left there's that metal bridge that you would you would go on the low one and I would I go down into the, the the trees there, 
go all the way to the very end, and then I cross. And the reason I go to the end is because I want to see if there's any people lurking about waiting to shoot me as I might cross the road. So you want to clear all that, and then you cross, and then I follow into the trees there. And I've shown that, that, that route uh, numerous times. But if you're in a, a low time scav run, this is this is usually fine. You know, you're gonna you're gonna head up, you can go any number of ways. And now as we get into the back, this is warehouse 17. I believe. I think I'm quoting that right. And that's the uh, you know warehouse 17 extracts. We look up here, you've got big smokestacks for orientation. This is that area. So this is the area where I said that I'm gonna be be avoiding. We're not gonna get the caches over there. And I wanted to point out this one, because this one was like a new addition to my cache run, and I find that it's it's often not hit. And and to um you know to talk about the caches just briefly, you you don't need to just do a cache run when you're you know you're playing in a raid. You could come into the raid, do whatever it is that you're doing, and then just happen to hit the caches that you get near, and you'll you know you'll you'll up your your potential. Um, so this one. Uh, pretty easy to find. It's in the tires right next to this this building. It's got a little got a vehicle in it, and right in the tires. And then on the on the sheet, so we are at this cache right here. Uh, is it visible? It is not visible. Wow, you're really giving me grief there, there thing. Okay, there we are. That's where we are right right this moment. So right there, right there. Can I do this? Probably not. That's okay. Huh. I don't play Tarkov myself, but I'll recommend you to my friend. That's cool, dude. What are you, what are you playing these days, Brent? And I mostly do learning content in the channel, so whenever I'm live, that's the the basis of what I'm doing. I've been showing a lot of money making tutorials, specifically on customs, how people can can get rich. So walking through here, you know, I I tend to avoid that side. You might end up in a bit of a fight around this area, but as soon as you get to this wall, you, know, you have a bit of cover. So we're going to move through. And again, like late raid, if there's like 15 minutes or less left, the map is pretty much yours. You'll run into fights here and there, but, you know, most of the area has been developed. The PMCs have spread out or gotten gotten out of the, out of the match. Um, so this one, I wouldn't necessarily take this this particular exit right here i would come come through and oh yeah by the way that that cache that we just hit that one right there i typically will hit it if it's like late raid i i will avoid that one if it's early raid like i said i will you know i'll just head down the the, the roads and I, I come through the trees right up here so if you're looking for orientation there's the dorms and then towards the end of this road that you can't see because of the fog that's where the road like cuts to the right and goes to sniper roadblock or uh, snakes a little bit to the left to go to that bridge that we started on or you can cut to the left to go to ruaf roadblock road so we'll head on over here get across and i know that a lot of people say they don't like this cache because it's noisy um my opinion is that like if if you come in here and get out like if someone's in the area and you fail to notice them you're you're usually dying to that you're not dying from being specifically in this container like i i don't think i've ever died in this container but i understand that people do so it's it's usually that you've just gotten caught off guard or gotten off gotten gotten unlucky really uh so right now we are we are at this cache right here so so to the dorms is this is technically south <laughs> the cardinal directions have changed. This is technically south. Uh, so we're we're just right here. So dorms is, is right there. And we were just describing down this road. So the cut to the right is the sniper roadblock. I'm going to see if you actually see what I see. Uh, you do. Cool. And then down here, this is where we started. And so far, we've, we've kind of hit those. Ran up here. Crossed over to this spot. And, and hung out. Okay, so right here is where we are right now. And now the plan. So really simple. We come outside. I always check this corner. Like I, I, I usually check this one pretty aggressively. Uh, I clear clear to my right, and then then get out. You know, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to keep an eye on on this spot right here. But you have you have a bit of foliage behind you, so it's it's a bit better. So come out. 
clear all the way and right up to the wall and if i'm playing like safer and slower i actually take the other direction and i go towards the right but if you're just trying to motor along the map come get in here and this is another one of those barrel caches so as we get up the easiest way to remember this one is there's there's a big old set of tires here okay so kind of towards this curved edge of the bus depot you have these tires and it's the very first tire so this one we are now right here yo what's up taylor how you doing dude we're doing the we're doing the loot caches all the loot caches that i hit in my run i'm just going going through them one by one giving some tips on what it is that i look for whenever i'm i'm trying to learn these or whenever i'm trying to find them rather i've got them all memorized like to a t now but this is the first loot that i recommend people learn here and so i can actually see the cache already and this one the way that i first learned this is i went to the edge of this building and i went out like a 45 degree angle or not that building the wall sorry and that leads us right to this cache so it's another ground cache and again if you're having a hard time seeing these right now i've got my my like colorfulness jacked right up it's at 90. um don't worry about these other settings um but you can you can up up your hue and saturation on your monitor on your computer uh there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this so this cache right here uh another way to to know this one is there's this this fallen fallen log so if you're coming at it from this direction you're gonna have to walk over the log and it's against against the tree right here so this one we are now right here and then the next one that we're going to be heading to is is that direction okay so now looking up if we look to the right we can start to see a bunch of wreckage and rubble we look to the left we got a big big strong hill we're going to head up the hill and now we can see this this little little art uh i don't even know what this this would be called is it a stanchion i don't, I don't know a couple couple different ways to get in we can go in the broken wall on the right this is broken wall on the left this this particular cache here if it's early on in the raid i find to be quite dangerous this is a high traffic area there's a lot of people that are traversing the map from both directions so be cautious if you choose to get this cache and the way that i know this one is it's it's connected to this connected to this thing it's right on the side of it so this cache is so we are now right here and then my plan now is actually to head up the forest and we're gonna go snag this cache it's a little bit out of the way if you were low on time this cache is one that i would skip if you're coming at it from this direction like if you're traveling the map this direction i always travel the map one of two ways it's like you know if i'm doing loot i'm going this way or or i'm, I'm heading through this way I, I know that like you know you you do have an alternative you can come through this but i i tend to not traverse this area i find this area is more often than not going to be populated so if you're newer to the game and your awareness is low you're going to want to avoid that spot i run out of stash space though just sell 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 and you'll lose money in the beginning but but keep in mind that you need to level up your traders so selling to your traders is a good thing right um and the way that I prioritize stuff is I use the found and raid infographic. You can find that if you go to the wiki, just type in uh, Tarkov wiki found and raid items. And there's a, there's a really great graphic there that shows all of the stuff that you should be looking out for. And specifically, you want to keep the stuff that needs to be found and raid because everything else you can buy off the flea when you need. And I head back up this wall and we're not going to take the, the first break nothing wrong with that one but we're going to take this second break just for easy orientation and there's the the last break up there so if you really wanted to you could go all the way to the end in fact actually we'll, we'll do that because i think i drew it up that way on the map as we get in we're just going to follow the fence line <clears throat> And the way we know that we're at this particular location is because this big tower and this is a spawn so if you played on your pmc a bit you know you may have already started here this is one of the more desirable spawns on the on the, the game and 
or on custom, sorry. So we have this big tower and this one can be a little bit confusing too. So if we're facing the tower, okay, you're just gonna do a 90 degree turn to the left. And we have this, this fence over here. So it's like this little nook to the side. And what we're looking for is this tree. Right beside it is the barrel. And if you're trying to figure out like how to loot this one, this this right here, the actual like, oh, I don't know how that much ammo on this gun. Um, the bottom of the fence, that's, that's where I click on this loot cache. And we are specifically right here. And now my plan, so I, I, I rarely will travel this, this way to get to get down to this side of the map. If, if I'm up here, if I'm up here, I typically will just go this way. But for the sake of showing you all of the different caches, we're gonna, we're gonna head here. Um, and, and I would take this direction. So the one that I'm, I'm kind of mapping out right now, cause it, th this, this area right here is all nice and treed up. So we're gonna use cover as much as humanly possible. I, I tend to, to avoid this, this little gap right here. I tend to, tend to stay out of that. Okay, so tower, looking straight out, we can see the other tower. And what we want to do is basically like a 45 degree to the right. We can see this this area. We just looted a loot cache over there. Or sorry, not at that one. We, we looted at the next one. Might even have been a third one down there. Holy smokes, there's a lot of these things. We get off the tracks and keep slightly to the right we we'll start to see this fence next to the white wall and it's actually where the fence meets the white wall we'll see this other other barrel cache so we add another one another one so this is our cache here and then i think the plan is to just just head out back and we'll be heading to the the cache that's next to the pipes so it, a random story just about me and learning these things so i i you know it took the time i went offline raids i learned them did the month scav runs continued learning them because it takes a bit oh yeah and there's a neat little jump you can do here so if you run face the wall you can go over and you'll notice your character will like fly sometimes you'll like float um so don't be alarmed it's pretty normal it's just classic tarkov uh, but this cache that i'm going to i actually completely forgot about it i i I had been doing cash runs for quite some time and, you know, making, making tons of money. I, I probably made like, like an easy hundred mil off of these caches in one wipe. And I never looted this one. I just, I just completely forgot about it. And when I was researching the customs video, I, I came across this one. So as we get up to the pipes, there is one gigantic bush right on the pipes. So, you know, this is a good ambush spot. We're just going to jump over sideways because it's a little easier to jump. And then right at the end. So if you're if you're looking at it from this side, cash is right there. So we got the tanker, we got the gas station, we got the cash. And now we are we are here. Oh, I how did I change colors? Oh, I I know what I did. Uh, whoop! There's all sorts of undoing. You need red. I wanted to use Photoshop for this, but I, I can't. <laughs> uh, not on this computer anyways. So, uh, oh yeah, and this is a great free graphic editing program. If you're trying to get into a little bit of editing, this is this is one that I'd recommend. It's called GIMP, G-I-M-P, free, open source, great program. It's been worked on for, you know, over a couple, um, like two decades, I think 20 years. Okay, so from this spot, which is where we are, we are going to head up and we're going to take this little break in the rocks. We're going to hop into the power station or the weather station or whatever the heck this is. Substation. Substation! So, a little orientation. So we see the gas station on our left. We're looking for this hill on our right. This is another area that I'll avoid early in the raid. Unless I'm going to go and, and clear out the entire gas station, in which case then I will go and hit that cache. But otherwise, I, you know, if you're, if you're trying to play on the safer side, I would I would avoid that cache that we just we just learned. 
And this area can be a little bit confusing, but as long as you run to the rocks and continue to the right, you'll eventually see this opening, and it's before the white fence. So if you see the white fence, you've gone too far. So we're going to we're gonna take this, head straight up. We should see this tower. So another good point of re reference. And we should be in a familiar area. So if you played customs a little bit, you probably know this spot. There's a bit of loot around. There's a med case in there. Some weapon cases around this toolbox. Where, where are you? That's my favorite toolbox up here. It's a good toolbox. I like my toolboxes. Get your nuts and bolts out of there. Okay, so this cache, when you're trying to figure out where the heck it is, because again, like this this map is just confusing as with all maps in Tarkov, because they're so big, right? So as you come in, <clears throat> there's this one trailer. It's got a weapons case in the back. And it's sort of sort of backed into this area right here. So you got all these blue fences, you got a dumpster, and on the right fence, so I guess the one that's got this pallet leaned up against it, the closest one to the, the trailer. Is this loot cache right here? I usually end up coming at this one from right here. And I'll just, you know, loot this cache, move up, sit in it from safety. And where we are on the map at this point in time is, of course, right here. And so the next plan is to head straight across to the passage between rocks cache. This one I, I would hit, you know, most raids that I play. At some point, I, I typically will end up crossing up here. If I'm playing aggressively, then I avoid this side of the map entirely. But if I'm playing quietly or if I'm doing a, a Sherpa run, this is the side that I'll, I'll get on. This is the easiest part of the map to play. Guaranteed. So this is Passage Between Rocks. You can always tell Passage Between Rocks. It's got this little stump in front. It's got a couple of couple of trees. I know the, the night's pretty dreary. Raining. And on the right, so we have a, a, a big old rock. We've got the fence and this bush is what we're looking for. So, you know, we got rocks, fence, rocks, fence. We got this big rock sitting out in the middle of middle of the area. You can you can go around either side. What we're looking for is this bush. And in here, so I'll, I'll approach it from this side so you can you might be able to see it a little bit better right now. So we got another one of the hidden the hidden ground caches. So again, just in this this bush, and now we are oh too far, too far. We are exactly there, and now I'm going to this is this is a tricky one. So I find that most people forget about this one, get lost trying to find this one. I'm going to show you every little bit of reference information that I can to make this easy for you. So I had a couple little tricks for me personally to find it. Um, you know, eventually it'll, it'll like something will stick for you. So I'm going to, I'm going to put our back. I'm going to get right up here and try and make this like as, as, as painfully easy as possible. So we're getting back to this cache, right? We've got our back to this blue fence. The cache is right here. We're going to put our back here. We're going to start walking out. So as we walk out, we're going to see this little trail on our right. And we see these rocks up here. So these rocks are part of the reference. So we've got trail, we've got rocks, and then off to the left. So this is where our cache is, right here. And there's not a ton of these, these funny looking trees, these trees that don't have any leaves on the bottom. So what we're looking for specifically, and this is the this is how I learned it the first time, was this tree right here, which is really tall. Only got only got the pine going up on the top. And then there's these two trees that are actually I think basically identical. It seems like they might have been changed a little bit. Never really noticed the, the interior of these trees all moving around. <clears throat> but anyway, so these identical trees and sandwiched in between the weird looking tree and one of the identical trees is this cache. So hard to see even even right now. I guess it's getting late. I'm gonna have to hurry. I might have to actually load up another raid. It's kind of sad. So we have this direction as a way of finding it another way so we pop pop down here you might have seen this this junction so going going down dang am i actually gonna have to get into a new raid dang you tarkov so while we're standing in here there's these two stumps i'm just gonna 
see how bright or how not bright this is. Oh no. Ah. You guys couldn't even see anything. Don't worry, I'll go back. Um, so these two stumps are not even going to be relevant. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Ivan? Can't see the gameplay. I just realized it. Um, give me a sec, actually. I'm, I'm just going to... I'm going to I'm going to get right back here. I need this to be brighter. <laughs> if you're following along, I'm going to start again from where the blue fence was in that one cache. <laughs> Production completed. Purified water. Excellent. The hideout makes such silly money. Fuel is like nuts right now. If you guys are struggling with, with buying fuel, the easiest way is with, with Jaeger, I think. Jaeger level 2. And um, <laughs> people buy it before he's actually like sold out, basically. Or before he's refreshed. So whenever you refresh, so you'll, you'll have your timer right here. You can refresh this way. Um, so a uh, like, little filter trick. I always just click on the barters. For some reason, this appears here too. So what's happening is he's actually restocking like a minute sometimes a minute early a minute and a half early and people are buying then and if you're if you have a bitcoin farm um, the price of fuel is not bad but if you don't have a bitcoin farm you you might be like spending money to run your hideout um hideout really starts making profit once you have level two lavatory and, and level two workbench but anyways we're not doing a little tutorial here on that stuff we're gonna go back in on our pmc enable offline <clears throat> and i will i will book it back to the spot So these caches will earn you a ton of EXP. They will earn you a ton of loot. And, you know, like someone had said too, this is like, you know, th this will this will make your stash fill up quick. And that can be a problem, totally. Uh, if, you know, if you're under level 10, you might feel like you're wasting value by selling stuff to traders. Don't worry about it too much. You need to, you need to sell, you need to do business, business with the traders quite a bit. So, you know, just make your profit sell to them accept the the loss as it is and you'll be able to make your like fat profits off of the uh, flea market when you unlock it just what i would do is is maybe if you see an item and you think that it's a really high value item or you know that you need to keep it for a particular reason just hold on to that and you, you'll be able to narrow your thing but i understand that that's also a problem too with standard edition accounts um but such a good problem to have right too much stuff in your stash there's, there's I, I repost all the time every single day where somebody's saying that they've lost everything and they're broke and they don't know what to do and they like they're like I'm gonna reset my account like you, you don't need to reset your account it, you could literally end up in you know 500,000 surplus with some extra loot after one run one scav run like a, a pretty average run it's it's not it's not hard. And this is why, you know, I'm showing you where the loot caches are. I know you can go and find a video on this, but um, I, I think that the, the context that I'm able to, to show in and amongst all of the, the locations is going to be helpful for some people. And it was requested. So I'm going to run back to the forest. Got a nice bright day. Make my, oh, wait. Actually, here, let's make this interesting. How much hydration is this going to get rid of? All right, we're getting drunk. <laughs> yep. Tasted good. Everything is extra bright. And Tarkov's, Tarkov decided not to rain for a minute. That's cool. And I have a flashlight now. Oh, the flashlight's on this gun. <laughs> So this should all look familiar, even if you're brand new to the map. If you were playing along a little bit earlier, this is that the bridge on the left that we started at. We went inside the compound right there to get this, you know, tire cache kind of on the on the building that I'm I'm aiming at. And then beyond these trees that I'm staring at is the or are the dorms. So things should start to look a little bit more familiar. I, I remember being so lost when I was starting to learn the maps. It's tough. Definitely takes a fair bit of time for some people more than others. I don't have a, you know, a strong or I guess like any kind of an extraordinary memory. My memory is quite average. 
So playing scav runs, playing the odd offline raid, really, really worked wonders for me to start enjoying the game more. I did not enjoy this game all that much when I was just like a hatchet runner that felt like he knew nothing. So I played the first time in Tarkov where that's all I did was just like hatchet runs, hatchet runs, hatchet runs. And I thought that was, that was how you played Tarkov, but no. <laughs> now I can't even fathom doing a hatchet run. Like the only, there's only one reason why I would do a hatchet run now. And so here we are, another one of the caches. We're gonna, we're gonna head up this hill. You can see the, this little area right here is where another one of those caches was. Yeah, the only time I would ever do a hatchet run now is if I was watching a movie and I wasn't listening to game sound and I just wanted to, I don't know, have a, a small chance at getting some sort of random loot. Just hatch and run into whatever map, trying to get graphics cards or something. I don't know. Even then, like, I I, I feel like I wouldn't. Yo, hey, what's up, Gat? How you doing, dude? I'm doing customs with buddies. I love it. I hope you get all the loots, man. I actually want to do some customs runs and go hit the, the marked room. I need to get a money case. It feels kind of weird. I Like, I'm, I'm starting to run out of space for stacks of cash. Good problem, right? And you, it, it's 1.7 mil to buy a money case. So it's cheaper to get the get it with a barter, but I never noticed that cut before. Okay, so here we are again, and it's back to raining. Good, good job, Tarkov. Okay, so we are at this blue fence, and <laughs> so this is the trail on the right that that I'd started talking about. This is the set of rocks that I remembered. And this is, this is what I would, like, I would say this is the easiest way to remember. So if you're facing the rocks, you have your back up to the power station, basically like a 90 degree left. And this is like, you know, pretty, pretty fail safe. So there's the cache right there. These are the funny looking trees that I was talking about while that graphic was up. So you don't see many leaves on the bottom of them. There's two of them that are close. And these are the, well, they used to be identical. I guess one's a little bit, one's a little bit, uh more worn so these two trees right here and it's in between the the tall tree without the leaves and the, the funny looking tree another ground cache and I'll, I'll give you one more way of referencing this spot so the easiest way i would say is is this rock pile on the left so if you see the rocks then you kind of know because i I've, I've run up this hill numerous times and just been lost i'm like where where the heck is it i don't i don't know so we run to the right. This might look familiar. If you've run the map, you probably run along this way because I find that new players tend to stick towards the outside. It's just easier that way, right? Um, so you got this little fork in the road. Down there is the dumpster with a military checkpoint. So this little little fork right here, we've got a stump. We've got a stump. And then we're just gonna, just gonna kind of angle what? So uh, let's actually try straight, straight from this. Okay, and we basically run straight at it. So if you got to that point right there, and then on the map, uh, bingo. So now we are here. And the next one, we basically could see the area. We're gonna head down the hill and go towards the military base checkpoint cache. So looking down the hill. I've been itching to actually play some, some like, PMC Tarkov lately. It's funny, I just haven't been making the time for it. I'll get a little bit in. I did I did one one uh, interchange raid today. Those was good times. Got into the, the Ultra Medical Room, tried for Aletex. None were there. So this one's super easy to find. This is probably one of the ones that, you know, you'll remember the, f like... You'll, this This will be one of the first ones that, like, stays solid in your memory. So we're over here, it's next to a dumpster, it's in the open, next to a trash bag. And we are... We are now... Oh, go back. We are now at military base cache. And so I'm just going to head up the side, the rock wall, and we're going to hop into this cache. <laughs> I, won't, I won't leave the map up again. I won't, I won't do that to you. Why does it look grainy? Oh, 
looks really weird. <laughs> Let me know if you're watching and the, the gameplay looks really like grainy to you. So running up the wall. This, this area again should look familiar. This is one of the places that even new players tend to find. So looking over to the right, so sniper scab that spawns up here. Got these containers. This is scab checkpoint extract. And this cache is in a big old bush against the white wall. So there's only there's only two of these like blue containers stacked up next to each other, right? So for reference. And for standing in front of them, it's the second one. So it's this bush straight across. So you got your your little building right there. Container completely around. And there's only like a couple of these bushes on the wall. So there's this little one over to the left, and then there's this big one over here. But right across from the two blue containers, specifically the one closest to the, the brick building. And then it's, it's, you can kind of see it right here. Right in front. Now we are. We're here. We're going to head inside this area and we're going to get a another cache this is going to be the next one's going to be a barrel cache should have just put a hotkey for this on my stream deck that would have been nice next time so down towards the end one of the little break-in spots so this area again should look familiar for those of you that have have just started learning the map we're getting close to zb 101 1011. This is admin gate. So this big gate right here. And this is another one of those ones that's easy to remember because it's just in the corner. All right. So if you see the big gate right next to the the electrical pole and a tree, we have another ground cache. So that's where our location is at this time. We're gonna head all the way down the wall and get this cache at the bottom. So these silos are a really good reference point for this particular area. This is one of the first ways that I, I figured it out. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe it was the, the moonshine that was making the game a little more grainy than it needed to be. Uh, and I might actually turn off post effects. It could be, could be causing a bit of it. Yeah, that's better. Okay. On the right, this little bunker. This is our ZB1011. We'll have a quick peek in there, but as we come up on the left, we see so this big old stack of tires, electrical pole, and then a a nice ambush. It's the bush for ambushing. It's a great one, and it also happens to be where our, our next cache is. So it's it's right on the edge, it's right here. And and like please, if you're if you're learning to do these loot caches and and you're you know you're like okay i found it and you're like sitting right here well anybody coming down this road is going to blast you so like just put your put your butt in the bush and then loot from here you know <laughs> i was playing with somebody and and unfortunately they got they got bopped right right where that was so i'm going to run in behind zb1011 and we're going to tackle this this other cache oh look at that we got a hex grid in there holy smokes <laughs> it's the one of the best armors in the game and you can find these in loot caches so this is one another reason why you should be learning these that that would be a tidy little little takeaway can you imagine being on a scav and then you're running into a dude with the hex on like I, I, it's happened to me I've, I've been a scav running around with a slick so ZB1011, straight down there. Said I was going to run behind, so we will. And this building is is one of the buildings that we can get get fuel out of. And I'm actually gonna I'm gonna do a little addition because I want to show you where all of the fuel potentially can be. Because uh, I know it's a hot topic right now. This cache right next to the pipes. So we we got these four pipes that are coming from the silos to the building. And we've got another cache. A little side venture we will check out we are now here and so i'm you can get fuel in this building you can get fuel in this building and you can get fuel in 
this building. Actually, maybe not. I'm not sure about this one. I don't think so. Uh, but for sure, those those two X's right there, we can find fuel in there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take you guys to there. So from this spot, we're gonna we're gonna hop over. I'm gonna go in through this building. I'm gonna show you where the fuel is, and then we'll we'll get into that cache. Oh, that's a wall. Heading off to the left. I'm going to take the jump over that is behind that train car. If you're someone that's still looking for flash drives, which sucks, that blue van in the back of the van has a couple of computers, so you can find flash drives in the end. Actually, let's have a look. Maybe I'll get lucky and see a flash drive. Oh, and I didn't I didn't loot the, the, the fuel building, so I'm actually going to run back real quick. My bad. There's a couple spots in here you can find fuel. <laughs> Have a good sleep there, Samuel, and you're, you're most welcome, dude. So we're showing showing all the, the hidden caches tonight. This is the stuff that you know that that, that we need to we need to learn. So you can find fuel right right here. I, I'm not sure about that corner, but definitely right there. You can certainly find fuel where there's a fuel can in this exact spot. And I believe fuel can be found right over here, too. So, fuel in here. And, and you know, this this stuff's going for 450k right now. Which is just, like, insanity. If you take a fuel out of raid and you have access to buy it through Jaeger and you're willing to, like, I don't know, set a timer on your phone or whatever, like, sell your fuel and then just buy fuel from Jaeger, you'll make, you know, you'll make the money. I don't, I don't think I would ever use a found in raid fuel. There's no way. But I also, like, you know, I'm home a fair bit. I think we all are, right? COVID? <sighs> COVID. So now we'll go take the jump over that is behind this train car. Get going. Get, get. Sniper scavs can spawn on there. Apparently not right now, since the adjustment to the scav spawns. I don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen. They're gonna bring the sniper scavs back. Maybe they will. It's got a nice little jump over. You always know that an extract is is on in this in this particular uh, you know style. Whenever the light is on, so if the light if the light wasn't on, it would would not be available. What are my thoughts on the whole low supply testing that BSG is doing? You know, I I don't know why they're testing in this way, but I I assume that it is it is some correlation with understanding how the traders are going to work as they will be in the future. So I I get that they're they're trying something out, but we just don't we don't understand like the in, like what kind of data are they trying to get? And I know that, that a lot of people are upset about it. Um, but, like, you can you can play the game without the hideout, so... We, we've, we've, become, we've become accustomed to having easy access hideout. I think they want to understand, like, what, what would the hideout act like with scarcity. So some people are, like, having to sip fuel, right? And I think that provides a very valuable perspective and, and to see, like... Maybe how much does it actually slow somebody down if that if that's like if they can't just afford to buy fuel all the time? Uh, so I think they're probably getting some very valuable data. And my assumption is that they're, you know, they're planning for a potential change to the hideout, which people are gonna lose their minds on. Um when I played the game the first time, there was no hideout. I'm, I I don't know. I, I'm I'm fine with it, <laughs> but I don't I don't think that I need the hideout or I would you know I would I would do the thing where like a lot of people I'd turn my generator off whenever I'm not using it that kind of thing uh, so right in this building we see these turbines you can find fuel sitting right here on the floor either to the left or to the right so that's one one of two fuel spawns in this building and there's actually another spawn in this building um, you can find filters right here which is sweet there's another fuel spawn right in this red tank or red container. It's right there on the pallets. You can find it. And what do you think about it, Carlos? 
<laughs> I know I know a lot of people don't like it. So we're heading out the building. I'm gonna go out the back, back left, behind the train. And this is another one of those those caches that will be pretty easy for you to find again if you're just starting to learn these. So there's this, this gaping hole next to the building. You can see the cache quite easily. So if you look at the building, it's got the number three on the side. You know, the train runs runs out the back. This area is, uh, I don't know, like, I wouldn't say this area is overly spooky. This is, like, if you're wanting, like, medium action in the game, this is a good area to come find it because it's usually not overrun with players, but there'll be, you know, people wander in and out of here. So we've got yet another loot cache. Yet another loot cache. We got to see where, where some of the fuel spawns were. Those are definitely useful. After this, we are going to head out the back of the building and make our way to the last cache of this, this little tutorial. Yeah, I get I get like BSG's methods are fairly controversial. They're I would describe them as unapologetic developers. And I think that these guys are at a point now where like the the project is is a job it's a joy and it's also a burden um so the the burden part sucks and i like this is like you can see the the stress on their face they're just they're sick of the toxic community stuff and so now they're at the point where they're just like you know what you can like the game or you can go they they like completely unapologetic about it it's it's quite hilarious because it's something that north american companies can't get away with uh, but they're just like we don't we don't care like thanks for your money sorry we don't offer refunds we're in russia um you know if you don't like it then then go cry about it online and we'll ignore that too <laughs> i i think that more companies need to stop putting up with the toxic community um you know toxic community stuff it's it's pretty brutal People are people are vicious online. I don't like that. Uh, if if it was in a perfect world, I think BSG would have a um, a person that they have hired full time that's involved in the studio that understands what's going on and can talk about the project a little bit more to start explaining. Because you know, like people eat this stuff up. Like they they see it as a as a toxic thing. They see it as a toxic connection with their community. I think that there's a major opportunity in there. Uh, because this game is loved and it's a knowledge game they could they could feed that and oh my gosh it would just it would just like maybe they don't want the game to grow anymore maybe they're scared of that maybe it's it's a hindrance for them i don't know uh, but they could you know that's that's an opportunity they could just gobble right up and, and people would would thrive on every little bit of good communication communication is not their strong point um, they do a fair bit of it and it's way better than it was in the past but it's it's definitely not not you know something that people come to rely on <clears throat> I find it very dynamic that they're doing that when it comes to the gas shortage. I want to see how other supplies would affect the world of Tarkov. Yeah, they, they want they want stuff to be scarce in, in different ways. And I, I, I don't know how they're going to go about changing and limiting the the way that we find and, and interact with loot. Um, I know that they, they at one point, they, they hope to randomize loot so that you won't just be able to learn where all the spawns of everything is. I don't know how that would work for something like a hidden cache. Um, I don't, I don't know if that would work. So I, I don't know. Like, I don't, how do you, how do you randomize loot in the game? They probably have to get rid of the hidden caches. I don't know. Procedurally generated maps, map loot. That's how it would be. So to find this last cache, we're in the back of gas station. And so this is, this is, you know, the, you saw the smoke at the front. That's how, you know, the gas station extract is there by the way the pmc extract is inside the building and down the scav one is on on this wall so if you ever get confused you're here and you're like where's the freaking extract the scav one's on the wall and actually i think this is factory maybe is that factory i think it is um <clears throat> and and this is yeah this is the that's the extract right there so this, there's there's a couple little like bonus points of loot that I'll, I'll point out. We got the med bag underneath this tree. It's really weird. Just random loot spawns right here. You can see a dust cover. Just random loot. Kind of a funny one. And here's our last little barrel cache. 
But yeah, dude, uh, you know, on the on the subject of loot, BSG changing stuff, they're like ninja hidden, like non-explained changes. I, I think it's I think it's fine. Um, because people are just gonna like mine the crap out of the game anyways. Um I, I wish that they like embraced the knowledge part and like the sharing a little bit more and they had more communication there, but it is what it is. I don't think you can be too mad about about the way that they run their company. Um, we all have an idea of how we would like thing, things to to show up, but it's, um, you know, can't have it all. Can't have it all. And that's the last cache. So that's the gas station one. Again, I am not going to to even bother with these ones. I, I think that they're worth learning if you want to go and do that. Specifically, this, this last one would be, you know, if I was going to find one more cache, it would be that one. Uh, but I don't even bother with these ones. Not, not in the slightest. Yo, what's up, Kobe? I think if there was a, you know, really... Like, I, I have to believe that someone out there with a big studio is is copycatting the magic recipe of Tarkov. And, and they should, man. I would love to play a AAA game that, that feels like like the risk of Tarkov. Oh, I, I love the the PvP style of the game. That, that other cache I was, I was telling you, like, you know, that I would bother with, it's in somewhere over there. Be wary of, of this. Actually, I'll show you. I'll show you what happens. So there was a game that I used to play a long time ago on PC. It was uh, an MMO. So like your, um, your uh, like, was it WoW? WoW was an MMO, right? And what I loved about the game is that you would, uh, there was an area that you would be safe that was in the towns, but as soon as you went outside of the towns, people could just jump you and, and fight you. And I, that's what I love about Tarkov is that you have to be involved with the world and then like you can just be, you can just be bopped by people all the time. That's so cool. And, and the same thing, like you can lose your loot, you can find loot with them, and all all this stuff. Like there's, there's this neat risk that happens with the game and it makes it so appealing. Oh, I wonder why those bodies here. This is still going to freak me out. Oh, let's go loot this dude. Am I going to get shot? Am I not getting shot? Can you loot this dude? Oh gosh. I don't even want to go out here. It's giving me like anxiety. Ugh. Is it over? Are, are we done? The game sounds like RuneScape. Yeah, it's called Ultima Online. <laughs> Killed in action. That's it. So there we go. That's that's like the complete blue cash run that I've learned on customs. That is the like the the foundation of the loot knowledge that I have, or sorry, the loot location knowledge that I have. Those are all of the the like you know the main ingredients. And then I've learned. Uh, so after I learned all those caches, I went and learned you know adjacent areas. So. You know, just, just really quickly, I, I showed some of this on the, the last stream, but... I... 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 Oh. Do I even have the rest of the map? Oh, I don't. I think I cut it off. But the container area over by Big Red... I'm not even going to bother with the map anymore. The container over by Big Red, I, you know, I learned to loot that. I found out where a lot of the toolboxes are. As, that would be another one. Like, you know, if you wanted to try and pick, like, a container at a time... Find where the toolboxes are on a map first. The toolboxes are awesome to, to to loot. So get those down and then, um, you know, like, just just be curious in an area. Go go spend some time in it. Loot it around, especially when you're on your scavs. It's a good time to, to just be curious and check stuff out. And the more you know, the, the better and easier the, the game gets. And then, you know, you end up in a situation like me where I'm not, like... I've barely played over the last six weeks. I've just been doing a few tutorial live streams and my money just like keeps going up. Um, it's it's like, it's seriously easy money once you are, like learn the, the game and you learn the maps. And um, so I, I think that they're, you know, they're probably trying to find a way, BSG is probably trying to find a way to nerf my ability to just like oversaturate my, um, my money without completely 
sabotaging the experience of the you know the, the dude that are, can only play like one game a week or two games a week or something like that i don't think they want to ruin that experience for people but they want to somehow slow down the you know the people that have a, a, a lot of knowledge in the game so uh i'm actually gonna i'm gonna hop off here i've got a little bit of reading to do i'm gonna go play some guitar and then i'm gonna play some dnd that's what i do on tuesdays hanging out with the buds Thanks for, for tuning in. Um, again, you know, I, I started this stream, um, this particular content for uh, some people that made a request. So they reached out to me on Discord and they're like, hey, would you mind taking us through your, your loot cash run in a live stream? And I was like, yeah, sure. Sounds great. So if you have a request for something like that, let me know. Uh, at some point in the future, I do plan on on taking one of my, I, I think I still have a standard account uh, that I don't really ever play, but a standard account that's fresh. And I was gonna go through and, and kind of level it up to level 10 and show you how I would go about doing some of the early tasks. I know that that content exists on online, but you know, I'll show you how I approach it through my way and how I would approach it as a beginner to the game. Um, so I, you know, I, I can filter it through a fair bit of empathy for the the new player, because I, I the game the game's pretty tough. Uh, and, um, you know, a lot of the runs that I've been doing have been, been trying to show you how I would approach with like just low level entry level gear. Uh, and as you can see, like I'm, I'm not really hindered all that much by my gear because my knowledge level is high. So that should accentuate, like if you're interested in improving a Tarkov, like keep learning the stuff, learn the maps, learn the loot, learn the task locations, you know, the stuff we talk about all the time. But I hope you all have an awesome night. I'll see you on Sunday and I will be doing my first live reserve session. So it's going to be a map learning session. I don't really recommend you, you start trying to tackle reserve as a brand new player. So this is sort of more of a playground for me to be working on my future video that I'll be, you know, getting up on, on the, the YouTubes at some point. So I'll be doing that. And then I think it'll be woods after reserve. Woods is something that I'm going to need to spend some time on because it's just massive and big and scary and, you know. Okay. We'll catch you all later. See you next time. Have a good night. Have a good one. I'm getting tongue-tied tonight. <laughs> later, Kobe. Carlos, good to see you. Samuel, have a good night, man. Hope you're resting well. Gat Cat, good to see you too. Taylor, take care. And Brent, 